In today's video, I'm gonna be unboxing my second pair of Dominique Casey bespoke shoes. These are fitting shoes that take into account some of the adjustments that we needed to make after wearing the first pair. I'm Kirby Allison, and I love helping the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes. Join me as we explore the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. One of the most important characteristics of a great bespoke shoemaker is that they stand behind their product and are willing to make adjustments or even remake a pair of shoes if any adjustments need to be made. Bespoke shoes really are a process. People very rarely nail the first pair of shoes out of the gate. I'm not to say that it can't happen, it just hasn't been my experience. So the most important characteristic of a bespoke shoemaker that I look for when choosing one is whether or not they're willing to scrap a pair of shoes and remake them if the adjustments require it. Now the first pair of Dominique Casey shoes had a little bit too much volume across the vamp. As you can see, this really is quite voluminous for my foot, uh, for those that have seen some of my other bespoke shoes. And the result is that it's just a little bit too much volume. My foot moves around a little bit too much in here. Uh, and then there is exaggerated wrinkling across the vamp just because we have more room and more material. So Dominic, of course, has agreed to remake this shoe, but before he remakes this one, which I already have, he went and put together a second pair of shoes uh, based off the adjustments that we did to make on this one. This is one of the fastest pair of shoes I've ever received. I think Dominic was able to get this out in seven or 10 days. And so he was able to look at the adjustments that we needed to make, modify the last, uh, and then completely recut a second pair of shoes. So these shoes uh, I had made in a different material because the idea is that we'll get this pair right once we validate the last, then we'll go back and remake this pair of shoes. And so one of the things I'm really excited about being able to film this second unboxing is to really showcase that iterative process whereby you know having a pair of shoes, trying them out, wearing them, a shoemaker is really able to get to an absolutely perfect fit. So here we are, without further ado, let's open these shoes up. Okay, so here we are, second pair of shoes. Uh, and as you can see, uh, this is a trial pair. We did a, a dark brown suede semi brogue. Absolutely beautiful shoe. I felt that you know if we were gonna make a second pair, we might as well make it a little bit different than the first. Uh, and you can also see that this is a proper uh, fitting shoe. Uh, it doesn't have the bottom sewn on. Uh, it's been fully welted, uh, but it hasn't been finished uh, because so much work goes into that finishing process. And at this stage, if they need to bring it in a little bit, uh, and even a lot, uh, they can really take the welt off, uh, really undo it, uh, and take the, the shoe back to just being the upper and then relast that if they absolutely need to. So a beautiful shoe, let's see the other one. It's pretty exciting. So this is, as you can see, I've just got my first brown pair of shoes, which was the Simi Brogue from Foster's. And then now suede, you can really see, which is kind of the next step uh, in the evolution of my collection of bespoke shoes. I've got all of the formal dress shoes taken care of. So now it's kind of evolving to your more casual Oxfords and then one day, who knows, maybe we'll even get to some boots. So Dominic's got a nice note in here. Um, so he says, you know, so here you are, a little something for you to try on. Uh, it should fit in all the places the last pair didn't. So again, Dominic, we were able to film a little video for him and do a video chat where he was able to kind of see some of the adjustments that needed to be made. And those have been incorporated into these shoes. And then what we can do is once we really validate the fit here, we'll take these to finish and then use that last uh, really tear the shoe apart, uh, either completely remake it, or Dominic might see if he can do it so that just the upper is there, uh, and then re-welt it, and then refinish the shoe. So uh, let's see what we have. So great, this is pretty exciting. So um, pull that out. Um, so this is a beautiful pair of shoes. I mean, I hate to hesitate to kind of take that off since it's still not fully finished. Uh, so as you can see, uh, you know, whenever a shoemaker is making a pair of shoes, you know, they wrap it with this plastic uh, before they do the making uh, because, you know, it still is a very manual and kind of rough process. And what you don't want to do is during the making process to somehow slip uh, and really damage the upper because the moment that you damage this upper, you have to completely remake the shoe. 
but as you can see, the bottom uh, is really completely finished. Uh, after we try this on, well, let's see, maybe we'll take some of this tape off. Dominic, please forgive me. So you can see uh, right here kind of what we have going on. So uh, you can see the welting process, right? So this is where a channel is cut. This is the insole right here. So in the bespoke process, the insole is nailed to the last and really molded to the last. So you really get what is a, almost an orthotic insole, if you will, because it contours those natural characteristics of your foot. Uh, and then they channel it out. And then the welt, the hand welting, what it does is it sews through the insole. And you can see this is the interlining right here. Any hard countering like the toe puff or any other hard leather pieces of the shoe, it goes through that. It goes through uh, the upper, which you see right here. And then finally, it goes through the welt, which is this strip of leather um, right here. Now then, the welt is then what the uh, outsole is attached to, right? So then the stitching goes from the outsole through here. That's what you see along this line. And, and what that does is it allows you to resole the shoe without really disturbing any of the integrity of the upper itself because like with the Blake stitch uh, shoe, whenever you pull that stitching off, you really totally release uh, uh, the upper. And with a Goodyear welted shoe or with a hand welted shoe, you don't do this. So I absolutely love to see the interior kind of workings. Uh, I mean, another thing that you can see here since we have these opened up shoes is again, the space in this cavity between uh, this uh, insole uh, and the outsole is, is millimeters. It's one or two millimeters. And you can really only get that on a bespoke shoe because on a machine made Goodyear welted shoe, you've got that two to three millimeters uh, of, the, of the linen ribbing that the welt is sewn to. And the result is you have, you know, actually a pretty large you know, kind of chamber on the interior of the shoe that has to be filled with cork uh, filling in order to close that, that void. The result is with the bespoke shoe, it sits much lower to the ground, uh, it has a thinner profile, and that just creates a, a beautiful shoe that not only is more agile, it's more flexible, it's more comfortable, and those few millimeters, as silly as it seems, it really does make a difference in how, uh, you know, just how close to the ground your foot feels. You know, the difference is like, you know, a BMW M3 and a Ferrari. I mean, both are sports cars, but there's no question that with the Ferrari, you're much lower to the ground than you are with even a sports car, a very capable one, like an M3. So beautiful shoes, let's see. I mean, yeah, I really love this. This is great, dark, dark brown suede. So I chose dark brown suede because you know, I've got my other dark brown suede that I had made years ago by Alfred Sargent, uh, and I get so much use out of them. Now, the beautiful thing about suede is it's a more casual a texture, it's a more casual material, say, than smooth calfskin. It's exceptional for travel. I mean, you can't scuff these shoes like you can a pair of calfskin shoes. Uh, and, you know, every shoe wardrobe needs at least one pair of suede Oxfords. So just looking at these side by side, you can see that we definitely took a lot out of this vamp area right here. So let me grab a shoe tree. Uh, you really can't get a great appreciation for the uh, proportions of this shoe, just because again, it doesn't have that outsole on it, which pulls it a little more flat, but I'm gonna put this, this shoe tree, let's push that in even a little bit more. Uh, I'm gonna push that shoe tree in, and you can see that Dominic has taken a little bit out of this vamp right here. Uh, and then I think he even pinched the heels a little bit to kind of bring those in. It still features a beautiful, seamless back, which again, it's just one of those characteristics of suede uh, that I absolutely love. So uh, here we go. Let's try these on and see how they fit. So here we are. As you can see, there's been a slight wardrobe change. Uh, I didn't think about it this morning whenever I was getting dressed, but I felt that it was appropriate to honor these beautiful bespoke shoes with an appropriate outfit. So I went home and changed. I'm wearing a uh, Chris Despis fresco uh, jacket with patch pockets, a pair of, um, of khaki slacks from uh, my tailor, or him or Johnny Brothers, and a nice pair of our brown sovereign grade small dot melange dress socks. Uh, and of course, a linen Charvet shirt with one of our new Kirby Allison sovereign grade Macclesfield ties. So you can see much more appropriate for a pair of brown suede shoes. And I wanted to wear this to really show you kind of how these shoes uh, really would be worn or accessorized. So uh, these shoes are perfect for this outfit. So let's try these on and see how they fit. Can't wait. Um, 
So as I told you earlier, these are a pair of trial shoes. So they're still, you know, halfway through the making process. Uh, they've been lasted. Uh, the bottoms, you know, the insole is done. They've been, you know, pretty finished out on the inside. Uh, the only thing that is outstanding is the bottom. And the purpose of doing a fitting before putting the bottom on, bottom on is to uh, give the shoemaker a little bit of additional flexibility to do some small adjustments. Uh, now, Dominic did a fantastic job on the pattern making of this suede shoe. Um, he actually was able to go into his archive and pull some archival photos from the 60s and 70s uh, from a shoemaker that he really admired uh, and really uh, modeled this pattern after something that that individual did. It's got the same toe shape uh, and then it's got a mock heel on it just so that um, you know that the, the height is appropriate and then I really do love this seamless back. I mean what a great detail. So let's untie these. Uh, now with the bespoke pair of shoes, I mean, they're made to fit snug. So um, really, honestly, any pair of properly fitting shoes, you should uh, loosen the laces before you put them on. I mean, if you can just slide your foot into a pair of shoes without loosening your laces at all, uh, then really that means that the shoes are too large. So here we are, moment of truth, second pair of Dominique Casey shoes, some small last uh, modifications from the first pair and let's see how these go on. Oh yeah, I can already feel the difference. So it's much snugger at the, the heel. <laughs> There's no extra room up there. Now that is a significant difference. Um, tie my Berluti knot. Well, I mean, definitely a big difference. What we'll do in a moment is we'll actually put on uh, one of the first pair of shoes to kind of contrast the two together. Uh, but Dominic has taken a lot of volume out of this shoe. I mean, as you can see, I mean, there is no extra volume right here. He also narrowed the last a little bit, um, you know, so it really does hug the width of my foot. You know, it has a nice shape right here. Um, I mean, it's really, it's a significant difference in fit. So I stand up, Let's let the trousers fall down a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, as I'm standing up, you see that uh, the vamp totally flattens out. Um, it's really quite snug in the heel. A lot of the volume has been taken out. There's good support. So next, I think what I'll do is I'll FaceTime with Dominic uh, over the phone and for him to be able to actually see these shoes that's really the next best thing to an in-person fitting. Um, and we'll see what he thinks, but uh, otherwise I think it's a pretty marketable improvement over the first pair. So let's grab that first pair real quick. Um, here it is. So this is uh, the first pair that Dominic did. This is the completed one. And let's put this on just so that you can see these two shoes uh, next to one another. You can see the, the powder uh, from, you know, the, the last. So, you know, one of the things they do to help get the last out is they'll put baby powder on it before they put it in the shoe, just because the last, it's really incredible how tight they fit. That really takes a lot of work to get one of those out. So, I mean, you can really see the difference. I mean, if you look at this extra space, I mean, it's certainly a comfortable shoe, but it's just a little too roomy in here, I think, as I told Dominic. Uh, you know, maybe a slightly too wide. I mean, if I push my foot over to one side, you know, there's still a little bit of just excess right here. And then here you can see as I push that in, I mean, there's just a lot of, of extra leather. So all that really was taken out right here. You can see it's really a nice and smooth across this vamp. And the difference is, is as you can see, as I flex the shoe, it's much more controlled I mean, right here, because there's all that extra leather, it just would produce really large and kind of blunt creasing, um, which is not what you want on a bespoke shoe. You know, there was a little bit of extra space kind of in and around here. Um, you know, that wasn't a problem because it really fits quite nicely in the heel, especially whenever it was laced. Uh, but I think Dominic was able to just tighten that up a little bit so that it snugs the back of the foot better. 
I mean, you can see that, you know, again, here, there's a little bit of extra room, but that's been totally removed. Uh, and it's just those details that you really expect on a bespoke shoe. I mean, this, as a ready-to-wear uh, shoe, uh, really would be completely acceptable. I mean, a lot of people's shoes probably don't even fit this well. Uh, but with the bespoke pair, you know, really what's fun about it is you really can get a much closer, much tighter, and much cleaner fit. Uh, and the difference that all that makes in the long run is not only is the shoe more comfortable, but there's just less creasing and it looks better the longer you've owned it. Uh, whereas, you know, if you have a shoe that's too large, I mean, you just end up with large creasing across the vamp uh, and the shoes look worn uh, more quickly than a beautiful pair of bespoke shoes. So we're going to chat with Dominic, let him take a look at these. I'm hoping to go back to London in October. Uh, we'll meet with him. So as you can see, it's a market improvement. Same toe shape. A little bit of volume came out of the toe too. It's kind of hard to see because you've got this plastic on here. Um, I really wish I could take that off, but I don't... Uh, well, let's just do it anyway. Um, I mean, this needs to be brushed. But, um, you know, even a little bit of volume out of the toe, but it still retains the same, kind of the same shape. Although, just, again, less volume all around. And again, here in the toe puff, I mean, I can, you know, wiggle my toes around, whereas here it's not quite that loose. So, anyway, I'm pretty happy with these. So, again, as I said, you know, we'll get on the phone with Dominic. We'll let him take a look at these and kind of see where he wants to go next. But, you know, this really is the hallmark of a great shoemaker, uh, is that if there's a little bit of room, you know, something that would be totally passable for some bespoke shoemakers, you know, Dominic, you know, really said, look, you know, let us uh, modify the last, we'll do a second pair, uh, and then we'll remake the first one once we get it right. So uh, that's exciting because, you know, having a perfectly fitting pair of shoes really does require a little bit of iteration um, and certainly evolution of your last over time. And it's that feedback that you want to be offering to your last maker kind of as they're working through it so that, you know, as you're wearing shoes and as you're spending more time walking in them, uh, they get better um, the more pairs you purchase. So I'm pretty happy with these. So I'm really excited that everyone's getting to see the true kind of bespoke iterative process. Uh, this is a really important takeaway that if you get it wrong or even a little bit off, you know, to stand behind that work and redo it. Uh, and to be totally honest, it's probably a lot more common than a lot of people uh, admit. Um, the reality is, is that anything that's handmade, anyone that's being, anything that's being made, you know, by a craftsman is always going to have a degree of just uh, make variation. And, uh, that's something I feel like should be embraced uh, because whenever everything aligns and it's perfect, ah, boy, is it incredible. So I'm really excited about these shoes, as I've said on several occasions. I mean, you know, the toe shape that he created, this beautiful round toe with a nice puff. Uh, it's, uh, you know, one of the most beautiful toe shapes I've seen. It's a really classic toe. You don't see this very often. And that's the beauty of a bespoke shoe is that you can request you know, these really one-of-a-kind elements that you can't find in a ready-to-wear shoe. You know, you can work and collaborate with your bespoke maker uh, to reflect into your last. And so that's what we're really seeing here. Uh, and that's part of the process with Dominic I've absolutely enjoyed. If you haven't seen any of our other videos with Dominic, I would encourage you to take a look at them. You know, we've got one of the best uh, last makers videos where, you know, he sits down and talks through the process of taking my measurements. And then after that, we go downstairs uh, into his workshop and we actually get to see Dominic begin to make my last and carve it out of a block of wood based on those measurements. Uh, and then we have, you know, a fitting in London, uh, the delivery, the unboxing, and finally this shoe, uh, which is the second pair uh, in, of course, what will be a long-standing relationship between the two of us. So let us know what you think. If you liked this video, please comment below. Uh, I love reading your comments. I love hearing what you have to say. Uh, it helps everyone better engage with this channel. Of course, like, uh, share this video. That helps us grow. Uh, and if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe and turn on your notifications by clicking the bell in the lower right-hand corner of this video so that you can learn whenever we publish new videos. I'm Kirby Allison, and I love to help the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes while exploring the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. Please remember to visit hangerproject.com, where we have the largest collection of luxury garment care and luxury shoe care products in the world, as well as other great accessories like these beautiful sovereign grade ties and the sovereign grade socks that I'm wearing today. 
In the second half of this video, I'm wearing a bespoke Chris Despis jacket with patch pockets. This is made out of a brown fresco, open weave fabric, nice and casual, perfect for a Texas summer. I've got a blue striped linen uh, bespoke Charvet dress shirt. I'm wearing one of our new Kirby Allison Sovereign Grade ties. This is part of our permanent collection of ties. This is a beautiful uh, Macclesfield uh, printed silk tie. As you can see, absolutely incredible hand, perfect lining, ties a beautiful knot with a great dimple and a nice rebound. Uh, all that goes into the work and the lining and the other characteristics to balance this tie. I'm wearing a pair of uh, khaki trousers from My Taylor or Him or Johnny Brothers, a pair of my Sovereign Grade Small Dot Melange dress socks in brown, uh, and my George Cleverly uh, Buckskin Tassel Loafers. This is from their Ready to Wear Anthony Cleverly line. And the pocket square today is a Simona Godard a brown pocket square.